What's up, family? It's your boy Chappelle coming to you with another episode of Recap Kickback. Uh, on today's Recap Kickback, it will be uh, one of my first, you know, uh, television reviews. So if you know me from Post Show Recaps, The Connect, if you know me from Rob Has a Podcast, you know I love to talk about television and uh, I love to talk about black TV, but all TV really. And this here kind of um, touches on both of those things a little bit. This is a black led show, so I'm gonna talk about it because I want to. Uh, and we're gonna be talking about today, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the 2024 television adaptation, uh, from the mind of Donald Glover. Uh, and with me, someone who I've podcasted a lot about scripted television with, uh, before, my co host for the Bel Air uh, post show recap that is uh, currently on hiatus until Bel Air tells us that they're coming back. Uh, but he is the host of the 90 Day Fiance podcast and the host of the Traders uh, Rehap Up over on Rob Has a Podcast with Rob Sesternino. Y'all, give it up for Puya. Puya, what's happening? Hey, I'm doing good, man. It's it's fun to get back together because, like you said, Bel Air has kind of left us on red a little bit. And by that, I mean a lot went on in the last year that delayed everything. But I'm very pleased to be back here with you to talk about a new show and one of my favorite people in Donald Glover. So I'll take it. I'm very excited to, to break it down. Yeah. So for the uh, kickback listeners, uh, Puya and I have been podcasting together for a while. Puya is one of uh, my favorite podcasters. I've been listening to him for longer than he's known that I've existed. And I love talking to Puya about television, about pretty much anything. But Puya and I have been talking about Bel Air. Uh, and we talked a little bit about other shows in the meantime as well. I even convinced Puya to get caught up on Atlanta in the real time. And uh, Puya really enjoyed it. As you know, like he said, he's a Donald Glover fan. Puya, before we get into it, what did you think about Atlanta as a whole? Because uh, I covered it on Post Show Recast, but I never got to talk to you about it on air. It was, I don't know what I expected watching going into Atlanta. And it ended up being everything that i didn't expect in like a good way um from you know storylines that were continuous throughout the series but also the standalone episodes that left me very confused i know you got a lot of 3 a.m texts from me being like what just happened here um and of course getting to uh, watch the show to listen to the podcast with you mari and latanya was always a good time as well so I loved it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, again, like I said, it was unlike any other show that I was watching, which was a very fun thing for me. Yeah, uh, it was a great time talking about it. And then, of course, I love the feedback that we got from the Atlanta coverage. So if you want, you can still go and check out our Atlanta uh, post show recaps on the Connect. You can just type in uh, the Connect on um, post show recaps and it'll bring up our feed where we talked about Atlanta and Secure and several other shows, um, you know, that are now in the past and, you know, a part of this catalog, but not a part of the kickback. But there is going to be some crossover here with this Donald Glover project because uh, this is a partnership between Donald Glover and Hiro Mirai, um, uh, one of the other executive producers. We know he helped direct and write a bunch of the uh, stuff from Atlanta, the spookier stuff. Hiro, Hiro Mirai being a director that is known for working with Childish Gambino uh, on music videos. He's also done a lot of good work in television. And so here we see this uh, duo collab once again. Uh, Puya, are you familiar with the music videos Hiro Mirai has directed in the past? I'm very much not aware of producers or directors or anybody attached to videos outside of like obviously the artist so i'm excited to see if i know any of these videos you're about to say you know i'm about to lace you up okay so uh airplanes bob featuring Haley williams you remember that video no what's that song <laughs> You pretend that airplanes. No, I didn't mean to sing it. I didn't mean sing it. I didn't mean sing it. You know, I don't like that song. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, you love it. Um, but yes. <laughs> um, yes. Airplanes by B.O.B. DJ got his father in love again uh, by Usher. Classic, the classic. show goes on by Lupe Fiasco. Stereo Hearts. You know, the, the list goes on on um he did 3005 for childish gambino sweatpants for childish gambino they've been working together for a long time he's okay. done a lot of iconic yeah a lot of iconic work uh in the music industry but also like i said for atlanta he was doing the things the famous teddy perkins episode was nominated for a primetime emmy 
uh, from Hero mm-hmm. Mirai. Uh, and most people remember that episode of Atlanta. If you watched it, it definitely stuck out. Uh, also, New Jazz uh, from that same uh, exact show. I believe that was the 2018, 2019 Emmys or whatever. Uh, so Hero Mirai does some really good work with Donald Glover. And here... We're going to see them explore a remake of a classic or, I guess, an older film. Would you consider Mr. and Mrs. Smith a classic film? Um, I mean, I watched it. I watched it as a, yeah, a young man. But mm-hmm. have I thought about it until this reboot? No, <laughs> no. Um, it was. Was that the first project that Brad and Angelina were on together? I think so. And if it wasn't, I think it was the most important one because I think when that's when people started to look at them as a couple because it was like, you know, they kind of had a scandalous beginning. There was mm-hmm. some, you know, some Jennifer Aniston stuff in there and then they, they became a couple and then it was like, oh, did she, was there like some home wreckering going on? Was this a fidelity problem? There was a lot of questions and then we got Mr. and Mrs. Smith and then they had we, we had like this on-screen uh, chemistry that was palpable, right? There, it was yeah. a spy movie, but you could tell that these people were very much into each other. And now, years later, we're going to reboot it. And when I first heard about, you know, the television series, I was intrigued, but I wasn't necessarily excited. I was kind of more interested, timidly, you know, kind of confused as to why they were doing it. And so I tried to keep an open mind going into this, but I do have some thoughts about this series. And I've been seeing a lot of feedback online as well about people's uh, idea of exactly what this is. So um, as we said earlier, Donald Glover is going to be a very big part in this as he will be playing uh, John Smith, the leading character. And he will also be played uh, alongside uh, Jane Smith, played by Maya Erskine. And the two of them are going to be a married couple who are secretly high skilled assassins and they're going to have to work together as a part of their job. Now, Puya and I, for this exercise, only watch the premiere. So we have no clue what's going on. Normally in a situation like this, Puya and I would probably just break down every episode. We want to talk about the premiere and then give everybody a chance to watch it because all the episodes are available on Amazon Prime. So you can check those out. And then at the end of the season, maybe if Puya and I are still interested or we get a lot of feedback about covering the series, then we come back and we talk about it as a whole. You good with that, Puya? Yeah, I'm very good with that. I think that's the best way to go about it if people are into it. Why not give the people what they want? And also, if we are intrigued by people being like, no, 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 watch it, watch it, then it's like, okay, that'll be the the kick I need to to push through and continue watching, what, seven more episodes? I think eight episodes total? Yeah, I think, yeah. It's eight episodes total. And so this got us through the premiere, but now we'll have to see, you know, what else happens in the meantime. And if the final episode of the season, which has already dropped, of course, on Amazon Prime, is worth watching. So... If you let us know what you want us to uh, to talk about, we will talk about it. You can email us at recapkickback at gmail.com or you can DM us on social media. If you're in the Facebook group, let us know what you think about the series and if you want us to continue covering it. Um, so the cast here, Puya, we got Maya Erskine as, as Jane Smith, Donald Glover as John Smith. Now, we know you're familiar with Donald Glover. Most people are. But are you a big Maya Erskine person? Have you have you are you familiar with her work? So I was looking at her um, credentials or her filmography earlier, and outside of Insecure, I've not seen her in anything else. Um, and obviously, Insecure, yet another show that you got, you put me on to and said, watch it. And I said, okay. And I was like, oh my God, I can't stop watching it. So uh, no, she is new for me, but I will say after one episode, I think they've nailed this casting. I love the two of them together, and I'm intrigued by where we're going to go from here. Yes, she played Diane in Insecure for about six episodes, but she's a memorable character. She, stood, she stands out. Um, she also is known for her voice acting roles in like Bo- BoJack Horseman, Boz Burgers, mm-hmm. Robot Chicken, um, Big Mouth, uh, amongst other shows. But yeah, uh, I'd say in comparison to the Childish Gambino, Donald Glover, she's probably a lesser known name, but I'm very excited to see what she does moving forward because I agree. I think that in this role, it felt right. You know, it didn't feel like this was something like, oh, well, maybe they should have got somebody else. She really felt like she was owning this position um, as Jane Smith. This, um, I guess, you, like she wanted to be in the CIA, but now she wants to be a high risk assassin. And honestly, it doesn't look like anybody else would have hired her or John Smith to do this job. So for me, this character could be very important to how I look at Maya Erskine as an actress moving forward. Um, back to Donald Glover. 
Donald Glover is going to be playing John Smith, a uh, former military, now turned into an assassin. We know that he works with, uh, he has worked in like Afghanistan with some drones. Uh, he's got a pass. He's a mama boy. But now he's going to be married to Jane. And the two of them are going to be taking on the world together as a part of their job. But they're also married. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of this that I guess in the first episode, they kind of outline, will there be a will they, won't they? Are they going to get together? like? emotionally as well by the end of the season or is it always going to be a marriage of convenience and a business you know deal i guess it's we're you know we're yet to see that but also in the cast alexander skarsgård is um is <laughs> is credited with being in this uh cast as as well as eliza gonzalez and i thought this was very interesting for you because we start the episode off with mm. alexander skarsgård and eliza as John and Jane Smith, the originals, the OGs, and they seem like they're kind of living in wedded bliss. They're sitting out on the porch, out in a secluded area, until a Range Rover that we will soon find out is bulletproof uh, pulls up to the crib. Now, initially, they're about to pack it up and take off running, as spies do, but Jane says, I'm tired of leaving. I'm tired of running. Let's fight this one out. And seconds later, they're grabbing guns, there's ammo everywhere, they're trying to get ready for the shootout, and before they can even devise a plan, pow, pow, right in the kisser, right, pow, one in and one out the other, Alexander Skarsgård is dead, Puya, five minutes into this episode. Why is he on this cast list if he's out so early? Do you think we're going to see more of Alexander Skarsgård throughout this uh, series? No, the man's dead. We, ah. let, let him let him let him you know live his life happily in the afterlife yeah no um this was a very interesting choice for me because they introduced us to these two and immediately it seems like they're happy like oh look the squirrel came back around i was like oh mm -hmm. it was, yeah. Yeah, to me it seemed like they might be retired or something and then they get a little buzzer and it's like okay no we are under attack and i think this was supposed to be like this was the shock immediate death of hey do not get attached to anybody, which I'm intrigued mm. by if if there are going to be other people we meet throughout this season who are going to have a very short-lived time on the show. But this is, I think, just a method to draw you in. And also, given that we watched the first episode, this was about the most drama we got the entire episode. So um, mm. this was like, let's front load it with this. And then because we know we're going to be cooking slow for the rest of the app. No, I think I agree with you. I think they really set the tone here by taking this big name, Alexander Skarsgård, and killing him so fast. Where you mm -hmm. think, oh, okay, whatever you thought this was, maybe this ain't it. And so it starts off with him going down, Jane grabbing the guns like a badass and going and trying to shoot her way out of the house, only to be taken out by a long range shot from across the way. Um, and then that couple, whoever they were, driving the car and, and, and riding in the car, takes off. And so we're like, okay. That we're out the gate, it comes out strong, it's exciting, and then we dial it in. We really, really it in so that um, we can get to know our new John and Jane Smiths and Donald Glover and Maya Erskine. Um, so they're doing interviews. Puya, is this AI? How are like is this like a little computer screen asking a bunch of questions, right? Yeah, I, I it, it feels like it's a, it's AI, but also this is like high tech stuff because the first thing we see is hi hi, welcome, enter your nail clippings. I was like, uh, yeah. what kind of fetish is this? But yeah. it's uh, she pulls out a little baggie with her nail clipping. She puts it in there. And I'm assuming it's to have DNA identify DNA? the person. Yeah. But I was when like, we start using DNA from, from nail clippings, what happened to, you know, spit, hair follicles? Spit, yeah, strand of hair. Like, some, yeah. I, this is a choice, but they wanted the, again, not kink shaming, but. Uh, kink asking why. Kink yeah. asking for kink clarity. That's all. Now, I agree. Um, I, I, I saw that and thought, oh, that's an interesting way of identifying somebody. I'm sure a thumbprint would be fine. You know, I'm, I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, they take the fingernails and then we get some of these interview questions through this little computer. So Siri asks, how tall are you? What's your ethnicity? Are you willing to re relocate? I guess it asks if you're a type A personality. How many people you've killed? What's your educational or training background? Um, and what kind of food do you like? How much money do you have? You know, so it's, it's questions about their occupation, obviously, but there's also what I feel like are some compatibility questions here. And maybe that's because the final question they ask is, are you willing to say goodbye to your old life and to work with a partner? 
And here it looks like the two of these people, John and Jane, are both willing to say yes to that. And so they will eventually end up partnered up. What do you think about this question and answer portion, Puya? Um, this was intriguing to me because I think the biggest takeaway was that they are very much not compatible in some of their answers. But then they both love the exact same food, pasta and Korean barbecue. I was like, listen. Mm -hmm. When you have commonalities in food, you're going to get along. Look at me and Chappelle. We get along. Sometimes we might oh, yeah. seem different, but we like food. Oh, yeah. We, we have nothing else. We we going to eat <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, now, I like this. I thought it was as good. I think it was also a good way to set up that, uh, yeah, the people that filled the shoes of Jane and John Smith, because obviously the other two died in the first five minutes, uh, they are going to be not at the end of their rope, so to speak, but they must not be happy with where they are in life, whether it's career, family, relationships, where they're willing to drop all that behind to start this new chapter. So much so that they even both agreed, yeah, I'll get married to someone, cool, whatever. And then they meet. This is this is kind of like a married at first sight, but higher stakes and higher risk. Yeah, I wish they asked some of these questions on Married at First Sight and Love is Blind, because I think sometimes you get to the end of those seasons and think, how did you not already know this about that person? Uh, yeah. And these are pretty basic questions. They're asking about their ethnicity. Obviously, Donald Glover is African-American or, you know, Black. And then uh, we find out that my Erskine's character, Jane, is half Japanese, half Scottish, I guess half white um and so yeah you get this interracial couple who is now going to live and work alongside each other in a spy capacity and so after they go through all of the rigmarole of getting to know each other they end up linking up at their place of residence and this is a nice crib Puya. it's pretty big it's spacious and am, am i supposed to believe they live in new york city in this type of a world that's what they're making us feel like, uh, think because of where we see, like we see a lot of different street signs and everything. I'm like, okay, they're in New York. Okay. Yeah. Very luxurious. Top of yeah. this top dollar property right here, Chappelle. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially knowing that they're not extremely well off. I think she has $14,000 to her name and he has $360. He has 300, yeah, he has $300 in his checking, which again, I think this also further magnifies just how much money they would have had to have been offered to leave everything behind. Because as much as they were very willing to do this, it's very clear Donald Glover's character, John, is, you know, he's a mama's boy. He loves his mother. Uh, so to say goodbye to mom, uh, that's tough. But then on the other side, Jane was like, Oh, you're going to pay me that much to not talk to my dad? Bet. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was she was ready to, uh, like, hey, for the money, let's go. Um, So, yes, we see around the house they have typical spy stuff, a box with, you know, uh, a note in it telling them, like, instructions. They get, uh, of course, a wall of guns behind a painting. You know, typical spy nonsense. Passport, uh, permits to carry. Um and wedding rings to match. And so this feels like what will be, you know, something that is going through like a through line throughout the season is that they're married and they have to act like it, right? So they have to wear the wedding bands and it might behoove them to actually act like a couple. Now, we're going to see them take two different approaches to this. Uh, Jane is more of a reclusive. She kind of goes into her room and wants to shut things down. All right, you take that room. I'll take this room. I'll see you tomorrow for work. Uh, whereas John is kind of like, so you want to say goodnight? Is you want to have a drink? Do you want to talk? Is is this John having a romantic interest in her already, or is he just trying to do this for the sake of the job? Because I can't really tell. To me, it feels like John is because she has said she's secretive. She's clearly more recluse in that she doesn't, she's antisocial. She has mentioned she's antisocial. John is not that guy. John is mm -hmm. um, and you know, we see this with roommates all the time. There's a roommate that just they come in, they say hello, they go to the kitchen, they grab their meal, they're in the room, you don't see them the rest of the night. Whereas the other roommate is like, listen, let's hang out in the living room a little bit. Like, do you want to play a game or two? And I think John is that roommate where he doesn't know what to do with himself because it feels awkward. The silence is deafening. It's too much. Uh, what I did love, though, is when he pulled up to the bedroom to be like, hey, should we say goodnight? He's not wearing a shirt. Chappelle. You mm. you don't wear a shirt when you're trying to maybe see if there's a potential romance to me. Um, right. So I feel like he's he's very he's definitely a lot more willing to get kindled up here if there is anything to go off of. Yeah, I mean, he definitely presented as I was doing yoga, I was working out, and then I came up here to say goodnight. But you know, if you're 
in Jane's position and you're trying to have a long time by yourself watching TV, settling down with this cat that we find out later on is her cat, Max, um, you know, maybe you don't want a shirtless man at your door, you know, and he's kind of, I don't know if he's just not self-aware to realize how that is coming off to her. Um, or if, you know, he really is kind of like, look at my muscles, you know, cause we get grown up Donald Glover, you know, um, the, Donald Glover, we've been knowing him since he was Troy on Community. You know, some yep. of us have watched his stand up. He's a childish Gambino, but here he's a leading man in this role and a spy. And so he's a little ripped. And so it, it's for me, he comes in there with his shirt off. She looks like, oh, do you need something? Did you forget your shirt downstairs? And he tries to say it's because I was hot, it's warm, the heat, ri heat rises up, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I can't let go of the feeling that maybe, just maybe, he's kind of like, well, since we got to be here. You know, why not? In we, this, we're talking about this high tech apartment that's hella expensive that's in New York, and there's no AC unit downstairs you could have turned on. You know, like mm -hmm. you're you're responding like you have no control over the temperature in this apartment. To me, it feels like you do. Um, and again, I feel like when the thing for me was when he ended up further explaining why he was shirtless. That's what it was. It was kind of like the let me pull back a little bit, make sure that you don't think it's like oh you thought i was into you. no i'm not into you it's just kind of hot downstairs you know that's really what it was um mm -hmm. uh, again you kind of throw it out there any any response no all right i was not doing that anyway who said that well put, put, it's like the people told them that they're married so it's kind of right. like, as a married person i don't know if you want to sleep in a whole si different side of the house from the you know whether it's romantic or not there's a master bedroom and she's kind of like, okay, see you downstairs, you know? And so maybe he's thinking at least we could do is get together and like kind of be closer, like as a, as, as like build some type of friendship or even, you know, type of relationship, because we don't know how long this gig is. Are they married forever, Puya? Or is this just like for a, a few jobs? I don't think they even know. No. Well, they both know that they signed up through email. They signed up for the high risk job. This is the high risk job. They don't know what it entails. Even when they're given their first mission, they're not really sure what is high risk about it. So they're kind of unsure. The uncertainty is, is tough. But to me, again, to go back to like the roommate thing, one person in Jane is a lot more willing to explore the unknown, is a lot less scared of the unknown and can just ride that wave. Whereas I feel like John he definitely needs more clarity, and I feel like almost he's trying to be immersed in this because going to an unknown journey with nobody that knows you or anything like that or no connections is tough for some people. Like I, when I moved uh, to Canada for university, I was distraught, but I also know that I've had friends, family, other people who have moved, and they're like immediately soaking up the culture, immediately taking everything where some of us, listen, it takes us a little tough time, especially if we don't have someone to hold our hand a little bit or, you know, go on the journey with. And like John's like, let's go on the journey together. And Jane's like, get out. I'm watching TV with Max. OK, yeah. Watching Naked and Afraid. God, you know, <laughs> she tells him that she has trust issues. But we do see that he is the one looking into her. He takes he sneaks a picture of her and then he drops it into Google Images, trying to find out more information about her and then spends the rest of the day kind of you know asking probing questions about the situation mm -hmm. um so i know she's saying she has trust issues but i think before he's willing to you know try to hold hands through this process he wants to get more information about her for sure well i think the other thing is you like john has accidentally killed a person but then also killed 13 other people and has also mm -hmm. seen some stuff and he's like that's my story i know i have a deep past and a, and a big closet full of secrets what is yours? Because you cannot just be a regular, you know, like something ha you have had to do something to be here too, which I think lends to it. Chappelle, have you ever heard of this? There, uh, he was this a lie to just get a photo of her, or is there legitimately an app out there where if you snap a photo of a plant, it'll tell you if you overwatered it? Yeah, I'm definitely thinking that he was lying about the app. You know, he's like, um, <laughs> you know, you don't have to water that plant. She goes, okay. He said, well, it's on a timer. She's like, okay. He said, well, if if you watered it too much. Uh, the apple tell me, and then I'll take some of the water out. What does that mean? I take the water out, sir. You're lying. You know, it, it just feels like a bad <laughs> lie altogether. Uh, I didn't know what he was talking about in the moment, so I was not shocked to see that mm -hmm. he was secretly trying to Google image, like reverse photo, you know, search her like Max and Eve from Catfish, you know. So, 
Um, so, you know, we'll see that they both are having issues trusting each other as we move forward. Their first mission, though, Puya, they're instructed to find a woman at a restaurant at noon, mm -hmm. go sit by the bar, uh, collect a package from her, then drop it off at the location and also to have fun. That's pretty much all the information they get for this uh, mission coming up. So it seems like, you know, if you know anything about a spy movie or a spy television show, you know it's not going to be as easy as it seems. But honestly, I think I might have overthunk this one just a little bit because um, they do exactly what they're told. They go meet at a restaurant. They, they follow this woman around. And she seems to be just enjoying her merry day. You know, she's kind of having food by herself. She's enjoying the hell out of that sandwich, Puya, to the point where she's dancing. I know we relate to that. Oh, have, that first bite of a good sandwich, it takes you to a different place. Doesn't matter where you're sitting, who, who you're with, but you zone everything else out and you're just like, oh my God, this is this is incredible. And she definitely had that moment. Now, it'd be nice if we found out what sandwich it was. Like, I, I know that's not the point of the show, but hey, step aside, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I'm trying to be Mr. Sandwich. Like, what was that? What was in that? <laughs> yeah. More information about the sandwich to come, hopefully. Uh, but <laughs> do you see, think what's more likely? We see the sandwich again or Alexander Skarsgård? <laughs> the sandwich. <laughs> the, the, you know, listen, I don't know if we ever see the sandwich again, but they might end up at that restaurant again. Who knows? Because um, mm -hmm. they sit there and they're eyeballing this lady from across the room and they're trying to figure out, well, one, Donald Glover is trying to figure out more about Jane. He's asking a bunch of probing questions, mm -hmm. just kind of like trying to break the ice. And Jane, I think realistically, is kind of like, no, I don't want to tell you anything. Uh, you know, these two people have signed up as spies. They also mm -hmm. know that they both have probably shady backgrounds. So it's not a surprise to me that she's not willing to open up. But he's really trying to chip away at her, her outer shell because he's just like, tell me something, you know. And I think one of the conversations that they have is when they ask how they ever killed anyone. And they both say no. Um, but he says, well, she kind of diverts the question. She's like, does, does it look like I've killed anybody? And to that, I say, that's that, on, that non answer there for me, Puya, it feels like an answer, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't. Yes. Now I'm more suspicious that you may have killed somebody that definitely, mm -hmm. again, you're in this, you got hired to be in this high risk detail with a guy who knows he has killed like a, a, a dozen people. So mm -hmm. When you're being evasive, then that's going to make me think you've done something. But also, he also says no initially. So, you know, it's like, uh, well, if I'm lying, then she got to be lying. It's so funny to me because, again, to go back to the roommate uh, analogy, he is the type of person that can't live with a stranger. And she is mm -hmm. the type of person who could very willingly uh, live with a stranger and not see it be any big deal. Um, so I'm very intrigued by the fact that John continuously is the one that wants to know more and Jane is being withholding on it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't blame her. He asked her, what was her name before Jane? One of the things y'all signed up for was to leave your past behind. They didn't give you code names for you to go and start just blurting it out to the first mm -hmm. person who asked. So I don't blame her for that. And it makes me that in the image search. I cannot tell where I land on if he's just inquiring about this person that he now has to live with or if he's really suspicious of her and is looking into her life because he wants to know more information and i think if i was her i would feel the exact same way like i understand you want to know me but it's day one and you're asking a lot of personal questions that that matter if you're a married couple mm -hmm. but this ain't your normal marriage puya no it's not and what else i'm interested with here is because we don't know, we obviously in episode one, you don't really dig into their backstory. You don't dig into the journey here. I don't know, is this show going to have flashbacks? Because I'm curious what has made him so squirmish to like want to research her. Who, did he have to, he said he killed someone accidentally. Did he kill a part, like a partner he was working with because he oh, was paranoid? Yeah. Or did he have to, you know... Is he? Is this going to be a situation where, because obviously in the movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Mr. and the Mrs. turn on each other and they're fighting. So I'm curious if he might be more aware of what the de security detail, what the mission is here, and if he anticipates having problems, whereas she's just doing, like, let's focus on the job. Why are we doing anything extra? Yeah. Can you ask her if she was FBI or CIA? And I'm like, hey, man, you know, 
I'm sure if you were a CIA or FBI, you know, turned spy, you don't talk about being FBI or mm-hmm. CIA. You know, uh, it seems like they both had jobs prior. We know he was dishonorably discharged from the military, and she yes. was removed from the FBI or CIA or something like that, as she says. Um, we also learned that he's a mama's boy. He washes dishes while he cooks, and you know, she kind of eyeballs that. Oh, you're a mama's boy, or you're military, and I think she's spot on with both of those things. Um, one thing he says about himself as far as being a partner and uh, being married is that uh, he is somebody who never uh, he's never wrong. He, he's always right. Uh, that's his toxic trait is that, you know, in an argument, he's always right. And she's like, oh, God, one of those people. Do you know one of those people, Puyo? I'm talking to one of those people right now on this podcast. You think I'm always right? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. I am. No, I, I look, I don't feel like it. I think if you if you present me evidence otherwise, then yeah, I'm down. And we see that kind of with John, because there's a moment where he assumes that this lady that they're following, uh, that this man that she meets up with is maybe her son or some young random person who could not possibly be with this older woman. And Jane correctly assumes that, no, nah, it's her boyfriend. And by the end of their interaction, they're kissing and we're, we see that Jane is correct. And John has no other option but to admit that he was wrong for you. Which is always a sweet victory when you've got someone on the ropes like that who was with Chess saying they're right. And they're like, are you ready to say you were wrong yet? Or do you want to say I was right? Which one would you rather? I'll take either or. Yeah, his argument was that the assumption was still based on like he like he he made the right read. He was just gives the wrong answer. You know, let's not be results oriented here. You know, so they end up following after this woman. They're really kind of confused as to exactly what the package is, how they're supposed to get it. At some point, they go into a theater, and this goal is to like talk through an earpiece at each other, and get information, and kind of track the woman as she's in the theater. But we realize very quickly that in a theater, there's no talking. And so Donald Glover's in uh, Maya's ear the whole time saying, hey, you know, what's up? Asking her a bunch of questions. And she's forced to text back the entire interaction. And they talk about this one time when she was uh, 14 years old and she had pancakes with a pedophile. Puya, the question of the episode is this story about pancakes with the pedophile, which sounds like an awful book, Pancakes with the pe- oh, pedophile. Worst yeah. Dr. Seuss book of all time. Is it a true story? She says her and her friend, uh, Dina, they meet up mm-hmm. with the guy, uh, they buddy love for pancakes. He pays. They, 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 he leaves. They laugh. They go on about their day. That was her first trip to New York. She let her on, says it was Dina's idea. She was terrified. Do you believe this really happened, Puya? Only if she murdered the guy. <laughs> At 14? Yes. Otherwise, she, I don't think so. She murdered her. When, she murdered him when she was 14, or she like double back kill Bill style and went back and got him. Ooh, that's a good question. Um okay, let's go with the latter. Let's go with the latter. Okay. Um, because yeah. if she's 14, she's got like how is she not in prison, right? Like right. there is the punishment. No, I think after probably, I think the revenge came after, but otherwise, cause I mean, we're, tr- we've spent uh, the first 30 minutes of this podcast talking about how Jane is secretive and a bit reclusive and doesn't really talk, doesn't really share. This is a pretty big thing to share with someone. And it's one of the first things you're sharing, you know? So that's why I'm like, I don't know if I think this was, this was, there was truth to this, but then when he further prods after they were at the breakfast spot, she obviously tells him the full story of, yeah, we just laughed after he left. Ha, ha, ha. It was cool. Whatever. Um, but then to me, I was like, was this your murder? Was this Ooh. the murder? You know, I hadn't even wondered if she murdered the guy later on. Because I, I was trying to take it at face value. I, The way I was looking at it was that maybe that was her letting her guard down a little bit because Donald Glover was asking so many questions. But you're right. It's kind of a randomly specific story to tell like if you want you just met somebody they barely know anything about each other and the first thing you're like yeah this one time i went to new york and 14 years old i met with a pedophile to have pancakes and absolutely nothing happened the end it's like how are you still holding on to that story if that's the one thing that happened you had dinner with a stranger breakfast with a stranger and your homegirl and then nothing happened it's just that was it like where were you based in because did you take a day trip to new york you know what i mean at 14 yeah um, because the other theory, the other thing I could see being, because you know, we did hear her say, You're gonna pay me not to talk to my dad. Awesome. What if this is not a pedophile? Dina is not her friend. Maybe what if this is just her family? Oh, oh my god. Yeah, that would be crazy. 
That would be crazy. I see now. See when you say stuff like that, it makes me want to watch the entire series. And I know, I know. We did this with Bel Air, dude. We did the same thing yeah. with Bel Air. <laughs> we did, and we eventually interviewed the showrunners, and they gave us uh, very little answers as well. You know, but kept us coming <laughs> back for more. You know, yeah. so maybe that's the history where we might end up with here. Um, so uh, eventually, the woman does get the package. It's a box. There are some high, like intense moments where. You're, we're trying to figure out if they're going to be able to get the box from the woman. How discreet do they need to be? Donald Glover goes out of his way to get a decoy box. He eventually knocks the box out of the woman's hands. They swap the box out. And then uh, John and Jane are on their way to drop it off at the coordinates, which you find out is a pretty big home in the New York area. Um, they come in. They drop it off in the kitchen with a woman who seems like she's just setting up a normal like dinner. Yeah. yeah. yeah like a birthday. Is this a birthday cake? I don't know. I didn't see it say happy birthday on it. I feel like this was maybe maybe like a let's say anniversary cake or mm -hmm. an engagement party cake or something. I feel like typical. I guess I guess you can have a birthday cake without it saying happy birthday on it. I, is that a is that a are we adults now? Like, do we if we get birthday cake, it doesn't say anything on it, right? No, I think you got to put I think you got to put some words still on put the cake. Birthday and, on it. Yeah. And she tried to get a discount, too. She's like, oh, yeah, well, the cake is partly damaged or something. She's so maybe maybe it was smudged or something like that. Regardless, <laughs> they get the cake to the woman. They walk out. And now we see Jane speculating. She's thinking, like, what do you think was, you know, what was that about? What was all of this for a cake? What do you what do you think this is? And John has no interest. He's like, nope, we're not supposed to talk about it. We're not supposed to talk about it. We're not supposed to talk about it. And. Boy, we have to talk about it because this, this cake, it does the cake explode? Is that what happened here? The cake the was a cake bomb. The cake was a bomb. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's exactly what it was. Um, because again, I love the way they did this because I don't know about you, but I fully was like, okay, this must have been like a test run. This was a test mission mm -hmm. for them to see how they do because obviously th there's nothing high risk about this because we also saw them holding this cake on the subway just ha 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 yeah, how, yeah. how about that diversion you threw out there and then it explodes <laughs> like they were holding a bomb on the subway mm -hmm. that's where the risk was right but it's not this this cake is not time sensitive no one knew how long it would take for them to get the cake they weren't told to drop it off at exactly this time or else you know this message might destruct you know it it was none of that it was just get the cake, drop it off. So I don't know if it's an inside job. They give the cake to the woman. Maybe she detonates the cake and takes off out the other door. We just don't have enough information about the cake. And they don't stick around to find out anything either. Because as they should, they just take off running. And we see them in spy mode. And this is probably the first time they've really been in spy mode the entire episode. Because they're running through the streets. They're ducking and dodging. They don't know who's looking for them, who's seen them. Uh, they're covered in ash from the explosion there's a little blood everywhere and then eventually they're able to tuck off into a restroom to get cleaned up before splitting up and going their separate ways um and i think Puya, this is where i was kind of thinking okay i'm in now you know prior to this i was thinking okay it's, it's a lot of getting to know them it's very slow like you said maybe this is a test run we're not really getting a lot of action but aside from the jane and john original alexander skarsgård uh at the beginning Mm -hmm. This is the other moment of action throughout the entire uh, episode. There's nothing else to go off of. But it hooked me. I'm not going to lie. I, I was like, okay, I'm willing to keep going at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first like 15 minutes I was in, then the middle part, I was kind of like, okay, this is not giving me what I was expecting maybe. Um, but then by the end, it all came together. And honestly, talking through it with you here also gave me more excitement because I kind of think I came into this being like, it wasn't all that, but I think I was talking through it and, and maybe even thinking about some of the longer storylines I'm into. But also, I really did feel like the mission, the, the mission of them following the woman with the box to the theater randomly and then later to the to the little strip mall. Like this felt like an Atlanta standalone episode a little bit like mm. that because like it was just this random box mystery in the middle of what we know to be a show that's supposed to be at some point you two are going to fight. But we're focusing on a box and mm -hmm. uh, even like little subtle comedy moments of can you see what she's Googling on that tablet over there? And they lo he looks over at the old ladies Googling places, the best places to travel alone. And they have a little mm -hmm. laugh about that. So I like the little nods like that as well. And I do think that I'm going to appreciate this show ultimately.
Yeah, um, I agree. It did. Uh, that's that hero Mariah, I think of it all. You know where? It just yeah, which like now this. makes a lot of sense that I felt that way. Yeah, no, nah, that's a good point. They end up splitting up, going back to the crib, and then by that night, um, John has found himself back in Jane's bed. He's like, uh, yeah, I came up here to say goodnight, but now I'm really comfortable. She kind of lays on the bed, too. They've had a long day. Uh, we find out that the cat, his name is Max. They will not be changing the cat's name uh, because it's her cat. She brought it with her. Um, and he reveals that some of his, uh, you know, he did kill some people in Afghanistan. Um, and she reveals that it was Dina's idea to go meet Buddy Love, the pedophile that um, she had pancakes with, allegedly. So the episode ends right there. Throughout this episode, we saw different uh aspects of their character and their backgrounds kind of revealed in like tiny different ways you know even from the moment they get the first box with the passports and stuff inside i think um or when they start like speculating what it is she says oh maybe it's something encrypted and he says mm -hmm. well, maybe it's maybe it's heavy weaponry you know and it's just like that's the way the difference their minds work you know he says maybe this uh woman this woman is obviously this man's uh son and she's like, or it could be her, her boyfriend. It's like they're, they're thinking completely different ways, but they're forced to work together in uh, work and in life, it seems. And so moving forward, we have to find out what happens with Mr. and Mrs. Smith as the season pr um, proceeds and, you know, find out if we ever see Alexander Skarsgård again. <laughs> Puya, that's it. That's our premiere. What did you think about that's it? That's it. I mean, here's the thing, man. I, I genuinely think it was a slow burn. And mm -hmm. like I said, I, I really do feel like I came into this thing because we had talked offline about we'll do the first episode. And then if we feel like there's something there, or if others want to like have us finish it, we'll come back later at the end and tie it all together. And I kind of came into the call today being like, I don't I think this was a one and done. I really don't know if we go beyond it. But having talked through it with you and expanding on it a little bit more. I'm not going to be able to not watch the rest of this. Yeah, I got to There's watch no it. shot. Mm -hmm. no, I, I want to know. I want to know. Uh, are there going to be fly? Like, I, I'm so curious what the, the direction is going to be for the show. Because are they going to have flashbacks a la Lost where we're going to see how they got to where they are? Or are we just going to focus on the present day? I want to know now. Because now you said you reminded me that she said, well, Dina's the one who took us there. Did she murder Dina? Is Dina Ooh. the one that got murdered and not the guy? We need to know guy? who she's been killing. She who has she been killed? killing people. We know. We need to know if she did it because she never answered the question, Puya, and I, I kind of think she did. Yeah, I kind of think so too because I think we're supposed to see her as like the, you know, she's talking about encryptions and stuff. I'm like, she almost seems like she's in the duo because, like, you know, typically with a with a duo like this, one of them is like the the hand to hand combat arms guy. Mm. The other one is like. All right, hacked into the interface. We're in. Uh -huh. So I don't think this is that. I think she has also been doing some of the murdering. I feel like that's kind of what they're setting us up to see at the beginning, though. Yeah. Here's my big, big brained uh, like uh, theory about the season, right? I think this uh, John and Jane are the ones that killed the first John and Jane. I think that. When they that's them that pulled up in the Range Rover, she's in the car, he's hitting the long distance shot. Alexander Skarsgård's dead, the wife is dead, J Jane is dead. I forget her, her name, uh, Eliza, she's dead, and they did it. I think it's a flashback, and they're I think, infiltrating I think they from different like organizations. I think, they, I think they did it, I think they're together. I think they had to replace the old John and Jane with the new John and Jane, and their, their final mission is to take out the John and Jane before that. Look, look, okay. It might be a lot, but that's where my mind is at now that we talked about it. You know what I'm oh saying? Oh, my so, God. I know. Dude, it's crazy. I'm intrigued. Look. Because it did feel like in that opening shot, it did feel like there were two different teams shooting to me. Yeah. So someone was in the car, but she but she was killed by a long distance shot. Right. Who? So what's up? It's another pair of people out here. I'm telling you that in my mind, these people, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know for sure, but I'm definitely here to figure it all out. And so, Puya, if the people want it, I think we come back in a couple of weeks, give people time to watch all eight episodes, and then we talk about it later on. Again, if you're listening to this and you're like, give me more coverage of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, then email at recapkickback at gmail.com. 
Send us a DM on any of our various social media sites you can find on recapkickback.com. Join the Facebook group, recapkickback.com slash Facebook. And let us know that you want more Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And then Puya and I will return to give you more of it. Because I'm going to watch the show. I'm sorry. At this point, I'm in. Hopefully you are too. And hopefully you enjoyed our recap. Puya, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. It's been a great time. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you, what you've been up to, and where they can follow you on social media. Well, of course, they can find me on Twitter at Puyaism, on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Puya. That's where I am when I'm not podcasting. And like you said at the top of the show, um, 90 Day Fiance, you were my guest this week. That episode has now dropped. We did record and drop late, but fear not, because we are going to end up having a gap of a week for the Super Bowl. So you can enjoy the episodes whenever you want. And then we'll be back ready, you know, in two weeks once that's done. But also Traders. Traders has been taking over a huge part of my life at this point. Traders UK, I wrapped it up with Annabelle last week. Traders UK Season 2 was a great time. And I'm talking to Rob about Traders US Season 2, and we're having a good time there also. Uh, we've introduced a feedback show now. So if you have any questions about the episodes, we record those typically at the start of the week on a Monday. This week, we've got the West Bergman from the challenge joining us. I'm very excited about that. And we've also been getting the exit interviews, which have been fun too. So you can check all those out on the Traders for Hop Up. Uh, thank you, Puya. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me on 90 Day. It was a fun time guesting with you over there. Thank you for having me here. Listen, I know you don't rank your friends, but I was the second person on the recap kickback after Mari. And I think I'm I will take saying. that. I'm just saying. Yeah, this, it, points were made. Um, but yes, I was on 90 Day with Puya uh, talking about Below Deck this week with Sasha on Rob Has a Podcast uh, on Nothing But Netflix. Of course, you can subscribe to that to listen to Rob and I talk about whatever Netflix show is hot and on the charts this week. Uh, and then, of course, you can go to suitspodcast.com to listen to uh, me and Rob talk about our daily coverage of Suits and the spinoff, Pearson. Um, also, this week coming up on Recap Kickback, our second installment of our top five February countdowns. And this week we did dramas with our special guest, Bryce Isaiah, coming to you this week. So um, check that out. It'll be Mari, Bryce, and I counting down the top five black dramas as, you know, per your votes and uh, our survey. There's a, there's a little controversy in that one, so check it out. Uh, and, of course, follow me on Twitter at Chappelle's underscore show to keep up with everything else I have going on. Shout out to Leaf Village for our theme music, Wall Maria. And, of course, until next time, you ain't got to go home, but you know the rest. Peace out.